Uh, good evening and welcome to Police TV on the eve of VE Day. As you can see, we're making our own preparations this very eve to celebrate uh, that very special day. Um, a little later on in the show, we're going to have um, one of our home correspondents returning um, to tell us about silage. That's uh, Mr. Tom Appleby. Um, but to start with, we have another of our home correspondents who's going to be doing a little bit of asparagus cooking. Over to you, Angela. Hello. Today I'm going to be making asparagus risotto. And I'm going to start with the asparagus stalks. Here they go. In the pot. Then the shallots. Then some olive oil. Put the lid on. I'm just scraping down the bowl like that. And now they're going to saute. So now it's finished sauteing. So now I'm going to add the wine, the white wine, and the risotto rice. And now that's just going to cook for two minutes. Angela, with the aid of an amazing um, piece of machinery called the Thermomix. Um, it confuses me. It's like pretty intelligent stuff, but it uh, produces the most amazing food. Can I just check with my technical director? Have we seen all of the uh, clips there? Or are there? How many have we seen? Two. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to come back to we're going to come back to that in a moment or three. Um, first of all, um, we're going to visit down on the farm. Mr. Tom Appleby. Uh, hi, everybody, and uh, we are today. We are lucky to be joined again uh, by our friend Tom Appleby, who's down on the farm. Um, Tom, what's happening today? Well, basically, guys, we're down at um, some new land for us. This uh, this is a farm um, that belongs to Chris Dowswell. Many of you will know Chris if you're regulars at the pub. Um, we're fortunate enough to have taken this on um, last autumn. We sowed the whole farm down to grass for the cows, obviously. And um, what we're doing today is making silage. So silage is basically a wetter version of hay that we make for the cows in the winter. So we take the surplus grass that they can't graze in the summer. It's too much for them to graze. And we cut that and preserve it for the winter. Um, so yeah, James is uh, driving the pickup wagon and that machine is, is um, picking up the grass that's been mowed yesterday and wilted, nicely dried out. And uh, that's going to, that's chopping it up, packing it together, and then we'll take it back to the silage clamp to uh, to ensile it. Right. When I was a, uh, a lad, it was all about hay bales rather than silage. What, what, why, why do silage rather than hay? So what we're doing is, is making a, a, a wetter product. Uh, if we keep uh, the dry matter percent is nearer to um, 25, 30%, whereas hay would be more like 50% dry matter, reason for that is it's basically more nutritious it's got higher energy content and by cutting regularly more similar to what we do with grazing grazing regularly we get much younger leafier grass that um that grows back quicker so we actually not only um produce more nutritious um feed for the cows in the winter but we also grow more grass as well by cutting it regularly and is it a good season this year for silage so far so good Obviously, we're always hoping for rain. We get, we, we, I've, you know, had all that rain over the winter. It has been quite dry. We had a nice bit of rain last week, but now that we've cut this, it would be absolutely ideal if we got a load of rain this weekend. I know no one else wants that for the bank holiday, but we <laughs> would be cock a hoop if we got a load of rain this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. So fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. 
How much of the stuff would you uh, would you actually harvest in a year then? What, what? So we're looking to make around about 3,000 tonnes of silage for the cows. Wow. And we normally obviously make a little bit more than that just to um, ensure ourselves against a drought or a very long, wet, cold winter. Um, but 3,000 tonnes is about par. So yeah. 500 cows um, times by uh, about six tonne each. Oh, six tonnes, six tonnes of grass eggs. That's just over the win winter. That's a lot of chewing to be done, isn't it? I suppose. That's just for the winter period, yeah. <laughs> OK. Hey, um, Tom, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. And we've, I know a bit more about silage than I, than I did before, certainly. And you look like you might just be getting a bit of a tan down there at uh, last. Yeah, a bit of a tan to go with my COVID mop. I've got the full <laughs> COVID going on today, nice. So not very, not very camera friendly, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I don't know. Same I can think of one or two who might disagree with you there, Tom. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> Hopefully I'll be clean shaven next time. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again, Tom. We'll catch you again another time. You. Cheers. Cheers, nice. Bye. Thank you, Tom. That was, uh, that was really interesting report to say it's six tonnes per cow of silage. That is a bit of chewing to be going on, isn't it? Um, so, um, hopefully we'll be able to join Tom at another occasion as we go through the farming year. Um, just a few uh, notes from people who are, are watching. Um, I see that uh, Angela Taylor from Witchhaven is watching, keeping an eye on us there, An Angela. Make sure we're behaving ourselves. Chris Perkins, Perkins, how do you do? You're all right. And uh, Laura and um, Sven, and of course our our friend Spike Pam from Powers are with us again this evening. So good to see you all. Um, so um, Andy Canning says uh, a new edition subtitles, extremely serious stuff. I thought we had them before. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We're all learning. We're all learning all the time, um, Andy. So, um, so let's go back um, to Angela and her uh, cooking extravaganza. So that's cooked for two minutes. Now I'm going to add the vegetable stock. So here I've got the boiling water, and I'm going to add my homemade vegetable stock paste rather than using stock cubes. Some salt and pepper. Put the measuring cup on. And now it's all going to cook for about between 12 and 14 minutes. The rice is now cooked, so now I'm just going to put in the asparagus tips, which I cut off earlier, parmesan cheese, and some butter. And I'm just going to stir all that together and leave it to rest for two minutes. There we have it, a perfectly cooked asparagus risotto all cooked with the help of my trusted Thermomix. And so, um, welcome to Grass Watch. Yeah. You can see it's all going to lovely fern. We've decided to let it go to fern for decorative purposes. One or two pieces that are well worthy of being eaten. Um, can I just say thanks to Angela for putting that video together, ably assisted by her uh, uh, other half. Ian and um, fantastic work there Ian on the directorship um, but um, just wanted to talk about um, the bug the bug this bug is what is known as a green stink bug and apparently a treacherous beast a treacherous beast um, not a particularly lovable animal. Uh, so let's hope we don't get too many of those around the bale this summer period. Um, so, uh, just a few things to talk about for um, uh, for tomorrow. But before we do that, you'll be glad to know it's Julian's joke of the day.
No joke. What happened to the joke? Yes, very good. Well, then, anyway. Sorry, Jules. We'll save that one for tomorrow. It's always good to get at least one technical error into the program. Um, but anyway, it was, quite, it was in a particularly grand joke as well, so hopefully we'll get to it um, as part of tomorrow's show. But anyway, so uh, tomorrow we've got, it's obviously VE Day, and uh, we will be celebrating here in a socially distanced manner at the Cross at Prepton, uh, along with our neighbours, having a few scones. And now, is it cream and jam or jam and cream? That's what I want to know. Very difficult. Is it scone or scone? Scone or scone? Um, perennial argument that will never ever be settled. Um, but um, so we've got tomorrow. We've got two um, lovely ladies joining us to talk about their experiences of the original VE day, and along with some other um, wartime memories and uh, memories of times gone. Uh, so we welcome them for tomorrow, and um, also. Um, We've got the amazing Brepton Silver Band have put a fantastic piece together, especially for the E Day, and very much looking forward to that, seeing us out from tomorrow's show. Um, Hi, but, it's Jules's joke evening. of the day. I was walking my dog Wilson through the park the other day when I came across a drug addict searching through the bushes. I said, what are you doing? He said, have you seen my cocaine? I said, not since he was in the Italian job. <laughs> was it worth the wait? <laughs> <laughs> so that was <laughs> Julian's joke. Julian's joke. Cheers, Jules. Look forward to getting another one from you tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, so back in the day, the uh, service men and women and the men and women of... Uh, Britain would have been trying to let their hair down a little bit, perhaps at a local Cayley or barn dance, as it might have been known, in the village hall. And they may have been dancing along to a thing called the Gay Gordons. Uh, it's a dance called the Gay Gordons. Uh, but where I come from, it's called Chase Me Charlie. And it goes, Chase Me Charlie, round the valley, up the leg of me drawers. So there you go. But I'm going to play out, play out this evening's extraordinary show with that very tune. Here we go. <laughs> Good night from Policing TV.